Good morning, everyone. Virgo Triad here. It is February 2nd, 2018. I wanted to take a few moments and go over a few things that have shown up overnight on the IUB website. Um, now, for those of you that haven't seen these things, I'm not going to go over everything. I am going to link uh, the site and where you can locate these items in the description. I do want to go over just a few things with you, and then I'm going to go over Randall Bean's closing statements. Uh, as promised yesterday, but unfortunately I did not get a chance to finish the video. Um, so I want to go ahead and make sure I get that done for you. So this is the witness list that uh, shows up for um, both Randy Bean and Heather and Tucci Giraffe along with the United States uh, Eastern District of Tennessee. And it shows, as you can see on this side, it shows the um, USA and on this side it shows the defendants so we have the actual um, list of people that testified okay so I want to go ahead and mention that the next thing that I want to go ahead and show you guys is the actual verdict form now I believe there's five sheets of this but this does show you the verdict that came down it is does have the file stamped on it from the court um, with all the proper information on it and it's showing that uh, the members of the jury find uh, unanonymously and form of all evidence as follows as to count one of the indictment charging a violation of 18 U USC 1343 that is wire fraud occurring on or about July 6th of 2017 we find the defendant Randall Keith being guilty Okay, and with respect to count one of the indictment, we find that the conduct constituting this offense is that it did affect a finance a financial institution. They're, of course, talking about USAA, in which USAA is stating that it actually um, lost a total of $500,000 at minimum for that motor home. Um, okay, as to count two of the indictment charging a violation of 18 U.S.C. 1343, that is wire fraud, occurring on or about July 6, 2017, we find the defendant, Randall Keith Bean, guilty, did affect the financial uh, institution. As of count three of the indictment charging a violation of 18 1343, that is wire fraud, occurring on or about July 6, 2017, we find the defendant, Randall Keith, being guilty. I'm going to move on to page three, where, as of count three, we find the conduct constituting this offense did affect the financial institution. Count four of the indictment uh, charging a violation of 18-13-43, that is wire fraud, occurring on or about July 6th. For Randy, guilty. Again, that it did affect the financial institution as of count five of the indictment, charging the same violation of wire fraud on or about July 7th, 2017. Guilty. Moving on to page four. Count five, it says they did affect the uh, institution financial institution count six of course of 13 of uh, section 1344 that is bank fraud on or about July 5th continuing through at least or about July 11th they find Randy Keith Bean guilty and as to the count of the indictment charging the violation of uh, 18 USC 1956 H that is conspiracy to commit money laundering we find the defendant Randall Keith Bean guilty Okay, page five. As to count seven of the indictment charging the violation 18 U.S.C. 1956-H, that is conspiracy to commit money laundering, we find the defendant Heather Ann Tucci Giraffe guilty. Okay, signed and dated, stamped, filed, and so there we have it. Okay, now moving on, I want to go ahead and mention that we are now going to be looking at the Randall Keith Bean closing statement. 
Okay, so as I was stating, the Randall Keith Bean closing statement that was given on the 31st of January 2018, I'm going to go ahead and read this through for you. It's several pages long, um, and I'm also going to link the, the link uh, that this is at on the IUV website for you to read for yourself should you choose to do so within the description of this video. But for those of you that want to listen to it, uh, instead of taking the time to go on the site and reading it for yourself, I'll go ahead and do that now uh, as promised. I have heard a lot of testimonies and I have seen a lot of redundant evidence from the government proving the fact that I purchased CDs from USAA and I do not dispute that fact. I have I even admit it to be true. I have also heard from the government that Ms. Tucci Giraffe and myself have devised a scheme to commit fraud upon various financial institutions. I, however, beg to differ with that argument. This case proves beyond a shadow of a doubt that these Federal Reserve accounts do indeed exist and that these accounts do belong to us, but not as individuals as we were warned. The Federal Reserve website so proudly claims, but as original depositories, uh, as admitted by Mr. O'Malley. The verbiage cannot be disputed and the proof is in the fact that the government has not allowed these documents to be uh, submitted as evidence or to be referenced by name. These documents cannot be disputed by any financial institution on this planet as we have seen proven in this case by the one institution who did receive these documents and close their case admitting that they were legitimate. Many of the witnesses have testified to this jury that they have relied on word of mouth from other employees in their respective institutions that these Federal Reserve accounts do not exist and failed to produce documentation from the Federal Reserve to back those testimonies. I, however, relied on documentation to justify and verify my decision to lay claim on these accounts and that they are indeed very real documents that the Federal Reserve and the government have unrebuted. As a matter of fact, they are so factually real that they are not even allowed as evidence to be disputed or disproven. Should you choose to find me guilty of any of the seven counts of the alleged indictment, you have in essence found an innocent man guilty and allowed, to, allowed a morally bankrupt and corrupt government in collusion with a corrupt financial institution which has been proven through the mortgage crisis, the LIBOR scandal, and bank bailouts, and many more instances to be true. You will allow the real bank robbers to get away once again with financial murder. I have been accused of being a fraud in this case when in actuality in an actuality felt it was my duty as an informed American and sincere living man to expose the real bank robbers in a huge undeniable scheme that has been in play for over a hundred years. If you recall, there were no objections to any evidence or testimony submitted by the government on behalf of the alleged defendants. The purpose in doing so was to see exactly how low the government was willing to go in a continuous scheme to hide the truth from the people and perpetuate a system of slavery. That has been the covert intention from the inception of the plan. It is time we the people stand up for what is right and demand full transparency and accountability of those who have enslaved us, and by taking that stand, we can begin to break down the illusion of dominance that has been in force for, so, for much too long. Your choice in allowing me my freedom will sweep across this planet in a tsunami of compassion and allow me to continue to prove that these accounts do indeed exist when the correct verbiage is used to prove it. Imagine a world where we can provide for one another as we desire to. Imagine a world without poverty or lack of any kind. Imagine a world of abundance, not for few to control over others, but with but true abundance for all. Regardless of any testimony heard, these accounts are very real. As President John F. Kennedy said before he was murdered by the same corrupt government in his effort to expose this financial scheme, there is a great danger in the way facts can be spun 
or strung together to give credibility to what is otherwise a wild-eyed conspiracy theory. It is our responsibility to look at everything with a skeptical eye and also be aware that many will try to twist reality to serve their own agenda or reinforce their view. President Kennedy was speaking to us about the financial uh, oligarchs in our country whose tyrannical rule and their weapons of mass destruction has come to an end. In a true David and Goliath story of old, it's time to defeat the giant. There is a book that was written about the Federal Reserve that exposes the deep corruption from its very inception, titled Creature from Jekyll Island. In this book, we learn that the Federal Reserve was created in secrecy back in the year 1913 at a private meeting off the coast of Georgia in a place called Jekyll Island. We also learned that Congress voted on the creation of the Federal Reserve during the Christmas holidays while most congressmen were home with their families. The Federal Reserve is no more a part of the federal government than, the Fe than Federal Express. It is proven by the fact that the institution has never been audited. We've heard many claim to try, but still no success. The creation of this private banking system was done in secrecy to take over the currency system and control over the people. It was stated by one of the creators of this devious plan that he who controls the money controls the laws, and I agree that that plan has indeed been played out to its full intent. It is time for us to wake up and see the reality of who we are and where we are. As the scripture says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against... Uh, principalities against powers against the rulers of darkness of this world and against spiritual wickedness in high places please take a stand with me in exposing the evil that has undermined and camouflaged itself as the authority over all in an effort to keep me quiet of about all of over the past few years I have been kidnapped by agents working under the guise of law in several occasion on several occasions and each time they assault me and charge me with fictitious crimes and even detain me illegally I have been warned that if I don't shut my mouth I will eventually disappear and no one will ever find me this case in my view is simply a grand scheme to put me away and make me disappear you as a jury hold the power to stop this corruption and expose it for what it really is. Let's make this case transparent to the public for all to see the real criminals exposed and dealt with accordingly. I have chosen not to call witnesses to the stand or even to submit vast amounts of evidence proving my innocence because uh, instead I have chosen to speak my truth from my heart for all a man really has is his word. I would hope that as a human beings we haven't completely lost that war and that has been waged that that has been waged against us for far too long and that you truly feel in your heart that the time is now for us as we the people to take a stand and make our voices heard because in the big picture they can shut up one but they cannot shut up one people when we make our voices heard together. I told you in the opening statement about the picture being portrayed in this courtroom and how that picture was, at best, a pixelated picture in which a lot of data is missing or incomplete and even manipulated. Please understand that without the documents, that prove the legitimacy of these accounts to Whitney Bank never being presented to USAA Bank and finally to the Federal Reserve Bank that the data has most definitely been manipulated to hide the truth. It is important to see that in the scheme to further hide the truth that the true criminals close chose to stop me with whatever means necessary which included kidnapping me in my effort to get to USAA Bank Headquarters in San Antonio, Texas to resolve this matter with all the proper documentation in person and to put to rest once and for all the fraud that has robbed every single soul on this planet for over a hundred years. If there is anything you can learn from this trial to help you better understand the big picture more clearly, then wipe away all the evidence and testimony and allow the light to reveal what is truly happening here. Paper money does not have value. Digital numbers can 
Digital numbers can be and very often are manipulated on screens to make us believe that they have value. But when it comes down to the end and the dust has settled, the only real value there is are you and I. This is the truth that needs to be understood. The truth that is has been hidden for generations upon generations. It is time to claim our value. Okay, so there you have it. That is Randall Keith Bean's closing statements that were done on January 31st, 2018. Now, I'm not going to make a whole lot of um, comments with regards to his clothing, closing statements. I think it pretty much speaks for itself. The entire case actually uh, pretty much speaks for itself. However, I do want to ask a couple of questions that maybe you guys are thinking of too. I remember back uh, a few months when Heather was talking to um, the, I, the people at the IUV website and making statements that she had been in contact with the families that run the Federal Reserve, like the Rothschilds and so on and so forth, and making claims that they had all agreed to release these so-called accounts and make it transparent to everyone what had happened with the Federal Reserve Bank from initiation all the way up to current and how corrupt everything was that she had literally made them shake in their shoes and they were going to come out with all of the information and we were going to have quote unquote unfettered access to funds. Um, I don't see that happening. Uh, I believe that what's occurring here is that anytime there is actually um, any kind of uh, block put in place because it, the nonsense does have to stop at some point. Uh, the court can't continue to entertain documentation that is not legitimate or that is um, found to be just as they would call it mumbo jumbo or as they have called it mumbo jumbo. And I think at this point um, what is being stated in this actual document that, that Randall uh, gave as a closing argument is a lot of information that he has decided is real, whether it's real or not, um, is is going to be made more clear by the actual transcripts. So I think it's very important that we continue to follow through for everybody who needs to know and wants to know what the entirety of this case is and go ahead and read the transcripts when they come out of what was actually said throughout the whole trial and not just take one piece of information from one party as gospel because as we see uh, the IUV website and BZ Riggers channel was coming out with a lot of hype with regards to the fact that Heather and Randy were doing such a tremendous job that at one point they even had the jurors supposedly in tears and it appears to me that uh, the jurors were not necessarily uh, going in the direction that they made us or tried to make us believe that they were going in. So since they came back with a guilty on literally everything, they pretty much threw the book at both of them. Um, doesn't sound to me as though the the um, scenario that the IUV website uh, or the BZ Rigger channel um, was trying to get at was actually what was happening. It almost sounds like that was kind of in their heads because to be perfectly honest with you, there's nothing here that I can find that suggests at all that the jury was ever swayed in the direction of these two individuals. Now that's just my personal opinion from looking at everything I'm seeing so far, but we're not really going to know for sure until we have the opportunity to look at the actual transcripts. Things will become much more clear then, and anybody who's made any accusations towards anybody else, um, you know, any other channels or anything else, where the original video came from and all of that, that will come out in the original transcripts. So we'll keep following and we'll keep uh, updating. And uh, remember, this is something that is, you know, historical in nature, yes, and it may be important to those of us that followed the TDA account issue, but truthfully, this happens on a daily basis. Money laundering cases for the federal court happen all the time. So this is really not that big of a case in the grand scheme of things. So let's just follow along. 
um, and see what happens from this point forward. Once we get the transcripts, we'll revisit it and uh, we'll see uh, where it goes from there. I hope everybody has a great Friday and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.